so hi everyone recently meta has released a new architecture for llms that is called as byte latent transformer as you can see in the image which is said to be performing almost equivalent to the traditional transformer with more efficiency lesser memory and a better speed and the best part being it doesn't require you to provide tokenized tokens so basically you can input your entire sentence whatever bytes you have and eventually no tokenization layer is required they have introduced something called as entropy patches that helps you to segment the tokens internally and hence no tokenization al algorithms are required you can now forget algorithms like byte per encoding as well so let's get started in this particular tutorial we will be trying to understand byte latent transformer how it works how it is different from traditional transformer and so on so let's get started so as already mentioned it is an improved transformer architecture for llm and importantly it eliminates tokenization so how does it work let's understand it it is coming from a paper known as byte latent transformer patches scale better than tokens so they have introduced a new concept of patches and eliminating the idea of tokens now so we'll try to understand everything no worries about it so these are the key features of the architecture that has been mentioned it is designed to operate directly on raw byte data so whatever input you provide it it will work on it directly no tokenization is required it dynamically groups bytes into patches based on entropy of the next byte so this is a very interesting concept that they have introduced that i will be talking in detail with example later in the video this approach enables blt that is byte latent transformer to match the performance of tokenization based llms while offering significant improvement in efficiency robustness and scalability now let's try to understand the difference between traditional transformer and byte latent transformer before we jump on to the technicals of byte latent transformer so in case of traditional transformer as we all know they rely heavily on tokenization uh, whatever input you have you first need to break it into tokens and we need to use methods like byte pair encoding and there are multiple more algorithms for that this groups bytes into a fixed sets of token hence there is no dynamic allocation happening here this tokenization step introduces biases and can lead to issues like domain sensitivity input noise multilingual inequity like for example if you are working with english or working with chinese the tokenization technique would differ a lot which transformer can't understand you need to manually change that in case of blt it directly works on raw bytes without a fixed vocabulary so there is no need of manual intervention to change okay this is now chinese language this is a delimiter used here this is a english language this is a space which is used as a delimiter between two words so this is something very interesting coming in blt dynamic compute allocation traditional transformer allocate the same amount of compute to every token regardless of the complexity leading to inefficiency on the other hand blt allocates compute based on complexity of the data so it is more efficient than that inference efficiency inference cost is tied to the number of tokens which can be inefficient for long sequences or predictable data in case of traditional transformers while in case of blt inference cost is tied to number of patches it can be significantly fewer than the number of tokens especially for predictable data leading up to 50% fewer floating point operations hence more efficiency robustness and sub word understanding and a lot of more things scalability also scaling is limited for traditional transformers in case of vlt that's not the case now first of all let's understand the most important topic out of the entire paper that is entropy based patching so before we jump on to it ki how this patching helps you for internal tokenization or sort of create patches we need to understand what is entropy entropy is a measure of uncertainty or surprise i think if you have been into pcm you might have heard this term in your chemistry classes in context of vlt it tells how hard it is to predict the next byte in the sequence it is some sort of a probability just take it as a number a low entropy means that the next byte is quite easy to predict for example the letter the the letter e after th in the word the the entropy is low because it is quite predictable that after th there are high chances that e would be coming out hence the uncertainty is low 
high entropy if the next byte is hard to predict the entropy is like the first letter of a new word like for example if you are calculating the entropy between next and byte and you are at this space what is the next letter that would be coming that is b now this can be anything because a new word is coming out hence there is high level of uncertainty hence high entropy how does blt uses entropy to create patches so this is very very important and i think you should pay a little attention to it because this is the entire crux of byte latent transformer so first of all a small byte latent byte level model is trained language model on the same data it will process on this small lm learns to predict the next byte in a sequence for example if the sequence is the cat the lm learns that after t h is likely and after th e is likely right calculate the entropy for each byte for each byte in the sequence the llm predicts the probability of the next byte and calculate its entropy if the next byte is very predictable as we discussed e after th entropy is low else it is high set an entropy threshold so in blt we will set up a threshold for entropy if the next byte entropy is higher than this threshold this means that a new patch has started out so instead of token this is how we are introducing patch like for example after th the next letter is g now thg the pro, uh, the entropy would be very high because this is a very unusual term coming in right usually t is followed by e if it is g the probability would be the th entropy would be very high and this would be taken as a start of a new word that is a new patch think of this threshold as a surprise level if the next byte is too surprising it is a good place to start a new patch create patch based on entropy blt scans the byte sequence and splits it into patches wherever the entropy exceeds the threshold quite easy to understand for example in the sentence the cat sat on the mat the entropy might be high at the start of each word after spaces i will be showing you one diagram that would be clearing a lot of more things and hence all the patches would be coming like this the would be one patch cat would be another patch sat would be another patch and so on why to use entropy for patching by grouping uh, it leads to more efficiency because it leads to grouping of predictable bytes into longer patches blt reduces the number of steps the model needs to process dynamic allocation blt allocates more compute to complex parts of the data high entropy and less to predictable parts making it more efficient now if you look into the example the cat sat on the mat if you haven't understood it yet we will just run through this example very quickly after th is predicted with low entropy after th e is predicted with low entropy after the and a space here as you can see c is predicted with a high entropy because you don't know what would be the uh, the first letter of the next word hence the uncertainty is very high now just look into this example shared on the paper daris tagrin is in game of thrones a fantasy epic by george r r martin now if you look into this particular graph after every space and you can see the entropy is very high the y axis is the entropy of next byte so on spaces the entropy is usually very high this is because the next byte the next letter is hard to predict and this is a plot should look like once you are predicting the entropy apply entropy threshold if the entropy of the next byte is above the threshold blt starts a new patch after the the entropy is high so a new patch starts cat is cat create patches and the patches are processed now how does byte latent transformer work it's quite easy to understand now as we have now understood it just look into this guy diagram where a uh, we are starting from this the bottom part better than bpe as you can see byte pair encoding byte pair encoding is one of the most popular tokenization algorithm but i think now it may go obsolete as well which is followed by a local encoder then the latent transformer which has the multi, uh, the attention matrix and then a local decoder and then we got the output so we'll just jump into this particular diagram input byte sequence blt takes a sequence of raw bytes as input the cat sat on the mat you are not tokenizing anything entropy based patching happens and this patches are then fed to the local encoder uh, how these patches are calculated we have already discussed above there is a model that is getting trained and entropy is calculated using this particular horrifying equation that i'm not jumping into for now patch boundaries patches are formed by segmenting the byte sequence at points where the entropy exceeds the threshold as we have already discussed local encoder comes in 
which in takes in the patch presentations as input and then generate byte embeddings. Each byte is embedded into a high dimensional vector and then cross attention. The encoder uses cross attention to aggregate byte level information into patch level representation. For example, for the patch the, the local encoder aggregates byte embeddings for T, H, E into a single patch representation. So just take it as like this, you have T, you have H, you have E, you are generating embeddings for it. And when you are creating a patch representation, take patches to be uh, equivalent to token or words, you are merging all these embeddings to generate a single representation of the patch. Then a local global, then a global latent transformer is introduced as we saw, which is very much similar to our general transformer, which has attention and all stuff coming in block causal attention. It's a large autoregressive transformer model that processes the sequence of patch representation. The patch representation from local encoder are fed into global latent transformer. Patch representations are nothing but embedding for tokens. Just take it uh, like this for now. Block causal attention. The global transformer uses a block causal attention mask, meaning it can only attend patches up to and including the current patch within the document. Now comes the local decoder part, which is very much similar to the local encoder, which in takes these patch representation and gives it back to the raw bytes. It predicts the next byte in the sequence based on the global patch representation and previously decoded bytes. It also has a cross attention to map patch representation back to byte representation and byte prediction happens. For example, the patch, the, the local decoder predicts the next byte in the sequence, such as space followed by C a etc output byte sequence the final output is a sequence of raw bytes which can be converted to text this is the whole walkthrough example walkthrough you have input as the cat sat on the mat you follow entropy based patching to create these patches the cat sat on the mat then the local encoder will generate patch representation for all of these patches the patch representation one cat patch representation two then global latent transformer takes in all these patch representation and generate output patch representations. Representation basically embeddings you can take it like that. The local decoder comes in and it takes the patch representation coming out of the global latent to generate the actual patch and the output comes. In. Key advantages of BLT as we have already discussed dynamic compute allocation, no fixed vocabulary. This is the best part. Uh, unlike tokenization, BLT does not rely on a fixed vocabulary, so it can work on any language seamlessly. It is scalable and robust as well. So concluding, I think byte latent transformer from Meta looks to be a game changer in the transformer architecture. I think we recently had Mamba also, which was released a year back. And we can now see more architectures coming out to improve the LLM working. BLT looks to be one of them and looks to be very promising given the fact that they are now using a completely new approach for tokenization that is entropy based patching. I hope once more models, some model comes out based on byte latent transformer architecture, we would be able to better judge how efficient it is. But for now, looking at the theory, it looks great and worth reading out. Thank you so much.